While our brains get swamped with information about patterns and color, through Callie's eyes, fast movement trumps everything. As she stalks the flies, her eyes send signals to the brain's visual cortex, which analyzes what's changed between one picture and the next up to 70 times every second. Faster than the human brain. And a far bigger proportion of the neurons in Callie's brain are dedicated purely to the detection of movement. She almost can't help but pounce. Cat's wild ancestors relied on low light vision and the ability to detect movement to stalk prey. But these evolutionary adaptations have a downside. Cats can't focus on anything closer than around 30 centimeters in front of them. But where their eyes fail them, cats have another perfectly adapted sense to go in for the kill. The team has set up an experiment to reveal just how our cat's secret weapon works. So the camera can do in full HD resolution up to 2,700 frames per second. I was thought 20, 30 times we'll get it. Well, we'll set the camera to 1,000... John Bradshaw is hoping these ultra-high-speed cameras will capture this extraordinary sensory organ in action. It really is very, very quick. I've seen still photographs of it happening, but there's nothing like actually seeing the whole motion. So I think we got it there, but it is very, very, very quick. John's trying to observe the cat's whiskers as they move forward into the attack position. Let's just take the toy away for a second. And let's, can we have a look at what we've just taken? Okay, so here we go. The cat realizes the mouse is within his grasp, but he wants to know exactly where it is in relation to his mouth. Its eyes give up because they can't focus very close. That's where the whiskers take over. So what we can see here is the whiskers suddenly being swept forward. And now the claws are coming into action. So what we've got here, look, the whiskers are pointing almost directly in front of the cat's nose. In fact, he's catching them with his claws as he sweeps around trying to catch the mouse. But the little muscles at the base of each whisker are really tugging hard to swing those forward, completely out of the normal position. This is really extraordinarily detailed. I'd never expected to see all of this. It all seems to take place in about a fifth of a second, which just shows how fast cats' reflexes really are, from the point where they sweep the whiskers forward, where the muscles contract, and then relax back, and the whiskers spring back again. The mouse doesn't have a chance. Far thicker and longer than normal hairs, Whiskers also sit three times deeper in the skin, where they attach to nerve endings, telling the cat how far each one is being bent back and how quickly. Their whiskers are the same width as their body, allowing cats to navigate the narrowest spaces. Cats also have whiskers above their eyes and on their ankles, sending them a constant stream of information as they sense the world around them. This pea shooter might be low tech, but it's the perfect tool to recreate a high speed target for our dragonfly. It fires out seeds so quickly, our eyes can't possibly see them. But is the dragonfly's vision quick enough to spot it? We're going to have a look back at our slow motion clip. Will the dragonfly detect the tiny pea? The dragonfly is completely still. And the head definitely turns before we see the seed come into frame. And then the dragonfly almost takes off, but it has enough time to assess that it's not a fly and it changes its mind and stays on its perch. That's incredible. The head definitely moves first. 
the dragonfly's vision is so quick, it can track the flying object and work out it's not prey, all in less than five hundredths of a second. It's partly due to the speed at which they process information. Dragonflies experience time in a completely different way to us. They have a reaction time of 30 milliseconds, far faster than ours. The whole process of seeing a fly, taking off and catching it, can happen in about the same time it would simply take us to react in any way. But there's something even more astonishing about the dragonfly's vision. To demonstrate, Patrick has a flicker book. If I flick this book fast enough, the images begin to animate. And that's because the pages are moving so fast we hardly notice them turning. It's essentially an optical illusion. Although our vision appears to be seamless, our eyes actually work by capturing up to 60 images a second. Our brain then combines them to create the illusion of a continuous moving image. Because the pages are turning faster than that, it brings the animation to life. To a dragonfly, however, this would look completely different. The images would appear slowed down, and it would see each individual page turning. And that's because dragonflies see faster than we do. Whereas we see 60 images per second, they see around 200. And so they can observe things that are just too fast for even us to process. In real time, it's impossible for us to see exactly what this dragonfly is doing. But using our high-speed camera that slows down the action 80 times, we're able to reveal the astonishing accuracy of a dragonfly's vision as it catches a tiny midge in mid-air. Dragonflies have been around for 300 million years, since before the dinosaurs. In this time, they fine-tuned their eyes to see their world in slow motion. Good girl. Oh, she's. Mo. And now, Shh. it's Kenza's turn. No, nothing at all. Absolutely quiet. It's amazing. But what have the microphones picked up? The decibel waveforms show the sound being generated by the birds in flight. Each spike is an individual wing beat. But with the barn owl, there's almost nothing. Yeah. Even our array of super sensitive microphones fail to pick up any sound of Kenza in flight. And here's the owl doing exactly the same. <laughs> nothing, <laughs> nothing at all. I'll play it again. There's not a sound. Yes. That is really impressive, yeah. isn't it? It's, it? It shows that they really are silent flyers. 
So how does a barn owl fly so silently? When air moves, it generates sound. The more movement, the greater the sound. The pigeon's large body and small wings mean it can't stay airborne without a lot of fast flapping. This creates turbulence in the feathers below. The peregrine has much larger wings, which it uses to build up speed and chase down its prey. The barn owl is far more graceful. Kenza's large wings and small body make it easier for her to generate lift. So just one gentle wing beat sees her gliding effortlessly through the air creating little more than a whisper in the feathers below. Rats are clever animals, they're easily trainable. You could consider this as a rat school. For the last three years we are working at uh, rats being used for the detection of tuberculosis, um, which is very promising in fact, uh, because on a weekly basis we, we, we pick out about 10 patients which have been missed in the hospital. TB kills half a million people a year in Africa, one and a half thousand every day. The rats can detect early signs of the virus in human saliva. Every time they identify a positive sample, the trainers make a click sound and a food reward of mashed banana follows. These rats are at an early stage of training to get them used to the click sound. This is the instrument that makes us to communicate with the animal. The moment when the animal hears this sound, it means that it has to stop what he is doing and then come for food. They then have to learn that sniffing in a hole will lead to the click and reward. After the rat knows how to put the hole, how to put the nose on the hole, then it will be easy when I present a sample on that hole. And that is the way how the rat the, the, the task. There are further stages to accustom the rats to the smell of the virus and then to indicate when they have smelt it. Once this is done, the rats know that a whiff of TB results in a tasty treat. The training at this rat school is highly effective. What would take a human scientist all day to diagnose takes the rats a mere seven minutes. They're also extremely accurate. We've got people now coming automatically to us. Hey, can our rats, can your rats uh, test us for tuberculosis? Because they had heard it in the newspapers in several places. And our rats are picking out some cases which are missed by the conventional methods. So what makes a rat's sense of smell so superior to a human's? This is Banu Rao, a cheese shop owner with a famous sense of smell. I'm one of the best cheese noses in the UK. I have judged three international cheese competitions and I have judged two British cheese competitions. I am a cheese expert. And this is Mandy the Rat, one of the Tanzanian rat school's champion sniffers. Mandy's nose makes about eight sniffs per second, compared to about two for Banu and the rest of us. It's a cheddar, that's a stilton. It's a brie, 
It smells worse than nappy. It is a smelly and wash wine cheese. Again, this is a blue cheese, Harbon Blue. Ghost cheese. Whilst Banu is very good at identifying types of cheese simply from their smell, Mandy sniffs in stereo. She can differentiate two very similar smells with just one sniff. About one in every hundred of Mandy's genes is given over to odour detection. Poor old Banu has to make do with one in every thousand. From a droplet of urine left by another rat, Mandy can determine its gender, sexual maturity and reproductive status. Now, that's one test we won't be trying on Banu. To help her in her quest, she's equipped with three superpowers. First, an amazing approach to getting about. Portia is a jumping spider. Able to leap up to 50 times her own body length. Nowhere seems beyond her reach. Next, her second superpower, superb eyesight. Essential if she's to distinguish her prey in all this clutter. Because her prey doesn't stray. Portia is a spider-eating spider. This raises a few problems. Her lunch is three times her size. Packed with venom, and surrounded by a sticky trap. Mission impossible? Not at all, because of her third superpower. Portia is a genius. She can map her world in three dimensions and formulate a plan of attack. She can have an idea. The web builder is blind. It won't have a clue that she's coming. Right on target, and safely behind those fangs. But a mind as active as Porsche's can always do with more brain food. Here, there's no anchor point for the abseil. But Portia has another idea. Instead of going to the spider, she will bring the spider to her. She plucks the strands to imitate struggling prey. Drawing the spider in to its death. <laughs> 